Hey, it's Jeremy Murray here. Today I want to be showing you how to create a YouTube thumbnail using Illustrator. We want to use some simple type tools and just simple shapes to create a pretty cool thumbnail. So what I usually do, we're going to just create a new document and call it YouTube thumbnail. And I usually aim for 1920 by 1080p. Um, that's pretty, pretty good size and it's high resolution, so that's pretty nice. And I'm going to leave the thing on points and see my case fine and just press OK. So first up, what I do is I go to my layers panel. So if you want to open your main windows, we want to open transparency panel, our layers panel, and your color. You want to open your color panels, which is here. And i got my transparency here as well, which I'm going to use. So in our layers, I usually start off with creating a background. So press retype that by just double clicking on the layer and you can type that. Press M for the rectangle tool. And I'm just going to drag a rectangle out and we're just going to go for a color. We'll just go for a, a nice orangey color. Yeah, that looks really cool. And I'm just gonna press Control 2 to lock that. So now it's locked. You can also lock the layer by clicking on the layer in the layers panel. I'm gonna go to the bottom right hand corner now and click this little paper to make a new layer and call it type. And now what I'm gonna do is play with some types. So press T for the type tool. And you just wanna click. And then I'm gonna go press V for the selection tool and just drag this, hold Shift and Alt to drag it up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a nice type. Usually I play around. Nikanely is a nice type I like to use. And maybe my new tutorial is like how to create a logo. So I'm just going to go how to create a and then have logo. Our logo is going to be our main type. So just keep that in mind. We want to make sure that we don't put any type or anything in the bottom right hand corner because on YouTube, when you go to search for videos, it has a time code and the time code blocks some of the stuff in the right hand corner. So you want to avoid this area and you want to keep things in the top left hand corner or in the middle to make sure nothing gets cut off. So I'm just going to leave that there. So we've got how to create a logo. I'm going to just hold Alt and, and Shift and just drag it out and it, it's going to make a duplicate of the type. And then I'm going to call this logo. And what I'm going to do is actually change this to another type. So I'm just going to go play with another type. Um, the Vento is pretty nice, but I'm going to use Bebis free font. Bebis is pretty cool. So Bebis, I'm going to use a bold because uh, we want logo to stand out. That's our main type. I'm going to bump the kerning by pressing alt. Just make it a bit tighter. And then at the bottom, I'm just going to copy it again and go in Illustrator. So people know it's a tutorial in Illustrator. And the cool thing about this is we can select all these type and we can actually align it. So click the top right hand corner, you see this align tool and it's going to center everything to the artboard. Make sure you, that you click this drop down menu and make sure it's on artboard. So then whenever we align things, it's going to align it to the artboard as you can see there. And I'm just going to make this a bit smaller by selecting together and then just holding shift alt and just dragging the outer transform box. And yeah, so now bump this up a bit. I want to try and make the spacing even. You can just use your eyeballs and <laughs> just play around with it. So cool. Now we've got our main section and now we can start playing around with, you know, some adding some more effects. So you want to get your, the layout right. So we're using just two different typefaces to create some hierarchy and a bit of contrast um, with our um, typefaces, which is pretty nice. And we're just going to change the color of this to maybe a darker or even a red or a really dark orange. Um, I'm gonna play around with the color guide a bit. Let's get it nice. We can even go like a dark brown maybe. But I want it to stand out so. So just play around until you find something that's looks good okay that looks alright sweet so we've got that and what I usually do is I select my main type and I go object and I go expand and then you get this box just press OK so now these are all just shapes so what we're gonna do we're gonna select our logo main or your main type and go object path 
offset path. And what this does, it allows to offset the path and just make it wider pretty much. So it just duplicates it and it offsets the path from the main path and goes outer or inner. So if I go in, you can go minus and you can see it's going in the shape. But if I go out, it's going to come out of the shape like that. So what I usually do is you can add a stroke and sometimes I'm, I, want, I make it like really big or you can just add like a subtle stroke. So I'm going to add that, press OK. I'm going to make this really dark orange. You can see I'm in my color guides and I'm dragging that out. So that's actually a nice dark brown color. And while I have that selected, I'm going to press go to my Pathfinder tool. And we're going to unite by clicking unite. And now you can see we've united that. And just select it with the direct selection tool and bring it to the back. But make sure this is ungrouped. So we want to select this and go ungroup, select the back, and then press control shift left square bracket and that's going to bring it to the back so you can see now all these are separate parts so I've got that I want to add this dark color to my swatches panel so I'm going to go to this document here click this in my swatches panel and we're going to make it go to global this just allows us to edit it and it's going to change all the time just press ok I'm going to make a new group by pressing the folder here and just going to quickly do that so now I've got this color and I'm going to change the color of this type here. So now you can see it's a bit more contrasty with the background because the background is very light. So we're going to make it more readable. And then I might make this smaller by control shift and then less than. And just to make those smaller. So we want to make sure it's the same size. And then as again, we're going to select them both and align it to the artboard. So you can see that we've got this happening. And the, another cool thing is we can actually go in, double click on the background. And you can actually just add, because I don't want that showing, just like that. So if you double click on something, it's going to go to isolation mode. And it's going to add it. You can just add whatever and it's going to do that. And I'm going to select it and then go path to under once again and click unite, which is the first one here. And now we've just added those to the shape because I don't want those spaces between the letters. So that's kind of looking cool, just like that. If you want to add it behind this little L as well, we can go to the pen tool and just press P and then hold shift. And then just going to do this. And then we can bring it to the back if you want it to look like that as well. Or you can just leave it. So I might just leave it for now. So it's sweet, we got that happening and it's kind of looking good now. So you can add some texture. I'm going to add a TIFF from one of my products I have on Creative Market, which you can check out. The link will be in the description. And I like this texture here, the foam board. And I'm just going to bring it in. It's a TIFF, so you can just drag these in Illustrator and really use them awesomely. Uh, I'm going to change the color and then go to the transparency panel and play around with the blending modes. And we'll see what we can come up with. So you can get some really awesome effects. I actually might change the color to this yellow here. Just using the eyedropper tool by pressing I and just going to change it. So you get some awesome effects. I think I'm going to go with... We'll go with screen and then we'll just put the opacity down a bit, maybe 70%. Yeah, that looks kind of nice. And then I'm just going to make a clipping mask really quick. Press M for the rectangle tool, drag out a box. As you can see there, get rid of that stroke. And then select the texture and the box and go object, clipping mask, make. So now I've got a clipping mask and then just put it on top. You can see it's within that box. And if you want to edit it, just go to the top left hand corner and click this little box um, sign there and you can actually go and edit the texture in there. Really easy. So yeah, this is a pretty nice example of how you can create a cool little so yeah after that we can add a bit of a glow effect as well which I love to add I go I press L for the circle tool and then usually what I do is go to my gradient panel and I click this gray box and actually we're going to actually drag this we'll select it again and go drag the yellow in there and we're just going to drag that to the top and then hold alt and we're going to drag out the slider 
I'm going to select one of them and click 0% on the opacity. Change the type to radial. And then click this little button here. It's going to reverse it. So now we've got a bit of a glow gradient there. And go to your transparency once again and play around with these. You can get some cool glow effects there. So I think color dodge is looking good or screen even. I'm going to go with color dodge and maybe drop it to 80%. I'm also going to copy it on this side as well. And then once again, create another clipping mask for the glow. So we'll this, we'll just make sure we can see it. Just like that. So you'll see a good clipping mask of the glows and add some nice effects. You can also go in there, double click in the clipping mask and then edit the glows as you want if it's too harsh. So yeah, we've got that. And then, you know, we've got plenty of space on the sides. You can add illustrations. You can even move the type to the all the left-hand side if you want, or just leave it like that. Um, so yeah, that's how you make a cool thumbnail. Don't forget to leave a comment below if this was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe for more content every week.